I've never seen material be this hard to get. Right now, demand is very, very high. Supplies are tight, so what we're seeing is prices are rising. Keeping up with the increased demand for products and goods during the pandemic has presented a major challenge for businesses of every kind. The U.S. could probably use another 250,000 truck drivers. I mean, there's that much of a shortage. You remember shopping during the pandemic. Toilet paper? Gone. Rental cars? Good luck. Building supplies? Sure, but those are going to cost you an arm and a leg. There's even a shortage of chlorine just in time for summer. It seems America is still coming up short when it comes to a lot of stuff. So what's the deal? Normally we think of supply chains as something linear, uh, just a, a straight flat line. They're not. It only takes one of one of your supplier suppliers to stop you dead. Some of the difficulties that we find was that there was a short supply, there was bad supply, bad quality, but lots of promises never deliver. My name is Daniel Salzberg. I'm the owner of Smart Supply International in Miami, Florida. We supply to hotels and uh, basically we supply to all inclusive. So we have different kinds of products. For example, over there we have hair dryers for the rooms, the hair dryer that you find in the bathroom in your hotel room. Here we have microwaves. This goes to the high end suites in a hotel where they have their, their own kitchen. These aren't nice to have items. Hotels need these things to function. And if you visit the Caribbean, you'll likely find some of Daniel's products in your room. While tourism pretty much came to a standstill during the pandemic, it's opening up big time now. And that's putting a major strain on an industry lacking both supplies and people. Craig Austin, a professor of marketing and logistics at Florida International University, told me that the roots of our supply chain vulnerabilities actually began decades ago and were completely exposed during the COVID-19 pandemic. Since the 90s, uh, supply chains have been built on efficiency, uh, running very well, and also on keeping costs down. It used to be um, when you would go to a store, even an auto parts store, you would see their inventory piled up to the ceiling. But there became a recognition in the 90s that inventory is evil. And the reason is because there's a carrying cost to it. It's not free. Your capital is tied up. This supply chain theory is known as just in time, and it's just like it sounds. You only have to have enough materials to produce a product right as you need it. The plus side, it avoids the cost of storing large quantities of parts and materials, and it became the global standard for business. And it also became quite common to source parts from lots of different overseas vendors. So, if you make cars, all the various parts from all your different vendors arriving from different parts of the world have to show up just in time by ship, plane, train, and even truck, just to assemble your new vehicle. It worked pretty well until it didn't, thanks to the global pandemic. It seems that the human infrastructure in the supply chain has been decimated. A lot of people is not working, they're trying to get them back. There are factories that you used to order one item and one week later will ship out of the manufacturer. It's not happening anymore. Other thing is that we used to have problems before the pandemic. One in 15 shipments, there was a little diff a difference in the quantity or a difference in the product. Now it's amazing. One out of 10, one out of eight orders that we have, they have a have a problem or they don't have enough inventory or they send the wrong item or they say I'm sorry that the, the component is coming from this place around the world they don't have it anymore they cannot produce it produce it it has been crazy 
These supply chain problems are such a threat to our economy and even our national security that the White House recently published a report about America's supply chain struggles. It details a system that relied too heavily on overseas manufacturers and suppliers like those in China for some of the key elements of our supply chain. And it turns out that some industries are more crucial than others, sectors like semiconductor manufacturing and advanced packaging, pharmaceuticals and their active ingredients, critical minerals and materials, and large capacity batteries all need to be priorities according to the report. But rethinking and rebuilding our supply chain isn't going to happen overnight, and the future will be grappling with yet another increasing disruption. Cyber attacks and ransomware. One month after cyber criminals shut down the colonial pipeline and collected a multi-million dollar ransom in Bitcoin. These are known vulnerabilities that we've been aware of that could have been prevented. When those companies are attacked, they serve as the first line of defense. Whether we're talking about a loss of power or we're talking about a ransom uh, attack where they, they strangle your, uh, your business, there are ways of avoiding this and being better prepared. These are in our future, just like any of these other disruptive influences. And so the companies have to uh, make sure that their technology is more airtight. Those pallets that you see up there in, with red tape, uh, that's coming from Spain. It's something that we import. What I learned now that I didn't know before the pandemic is that the market is fragile. It's really fragile.